Uh, one of the, the things that you, and I'm not really going to go into the, um, uh, you know, we've got a, a, a formalised methodology that we use to do the analysis, a thing called context entity analysis, which I actually uh, articulated more, um, you know, in a more formal way when I was doing some work with the International Atomic Energy Agency from 2002 to 2007, dealing um, the project, the problem that I was dealing with them was the long-term preservation of information about radioactive waste and radioactive waste um, maintenance facilities or, or uh, preservation stores. And the issue there was, you know, the, 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 the nuclear industry had been looking at this problem like we need to preserve knowledge over time so therefore we need to have it in forms that will last a long time, whereas in fact that was not the big problem. The problem was actually how do you make sure that every generation of people knows that there is radioactive waste, what it is, where it is, and the state that it is in at that particular point in time. So you need to have this continuous knowledge, which is really turning the whole problem on its head. So we've basically been um, taking context in the analysis and the use of the notion of sort of of archival context as a foundation for a whole lot of projects that uh, we've been working on. Um, some interesting ones uh, funded by the ARC to do with um, that looking at that 17% uh, of kids that don't finish secondary school. We're doing work with the Australian Ballet. We're doing work, there's a new one coming up with um, hearing impaired online evaluation stuff. And there's all sorts of things that we are having this opportunity to work with. But the one that is consuming most of our time at the moment is the uh, Finding Connect project. I just want to spend a little bit of um, time looking at um, the visualisation side of things. Now one of the things, why well, I haven't even really, I haven't even gone onto the website to show you what's there because that would fill up another hour or so. But what you saw was a list and I think, and what in a sense what we saw from Tim and some of these other things is lists are the common metaphor that most of us have to deal with when dealing with something. You go into Google, you put in a search, you get a list. You go to a catalogue, you get a list. Lists are databases, you know, essentially are ways of managing lists. However, you know, we're talking about networks and frameworks of stuff. And uh, when you see the stuff in a list, it's very uh, difficult to see how it actually sits in a network. But if you, uh, so what we've been looking at and been interested in is how can we start to look at these databases, these knowledge resources as networks that can actually tell us about what we're doing so we can actually use them as curation tools to actually help us um, uh, gather and prepare and work with that knowledge better. This is actually taking all of the entities and the relationships that are registered in the Find and Connect Victoria database and it's been um, produced as a, a web service visualisation, so this is actually happening, um, sort of delivered in real time. Uh, it's, it's still very much in test and development mode. It's been um, developed by a guy who sits down um, two doors down from me on the floor that I uh, work for the East Scholarship Research Centre. And in some ways, he's a bit like Tim. He has an honorary position at the University of Melbourne. He's trying to earn money however he can. We're paying him some money at the moment to do some of this sort of stuff. Uh, he's got some venture capitalists trying to help him out in the United States, but essentially, you know, he's self-driven uh, and he's also, he has an autistic child and he's got other things that really consume up his personal life as well. Um, but what he did do this time last year was actually win an Obama Prize for data visualisation uh, looking at history of medicine or, you know, actually medical, medical publications. So it was, um, uh, he was in visualising in this sort of form, in this sort of way, uh, PubMed, which is 23 million um, citations, and he was basically doing that through a web service approach. So I thought, oh, okay, there's probably some potential for us to get him to look at our data, which is already set up as a network. And uh, I think the, the interesting thing that we, we're looking at here is that uh, I gave him the data in a standard form called uh, an XML form called Encoded Archival Context, which basically defines the entities and the relationships between them. And he had no knowledge of what that content actually was, but then he basically put some algorithms together that looked at how they might be clustered and grouped and visualised in a way, spread out in a way that might reveal things about the, the nature of the relationships that exist. 
and the color so the coloring the clustering the way the distribution is all just done it's sort of blind algorithms um, and he gave me th this uh, visualization and I looked at it and thought oh, that's an interesting sort of hairball but maybe it is telling us something and I looked at it knowing the data not intimately but reasonably well and I thought okay there's this bit here is probably the government sector just because of the way of it's clustered and grouped together and that these other little clusters are probably some of the church-based organizations and when I actually sat down and did the analysis Sure enough, this was MacKillop Family Services and all the things associated with its history and its past and its records. This was the government sector. Uh, this was the Uniting, Uniting Care and Connections group. And uh, this group in here is Berry Street. And so I said, OK, there's something really interesting going on here. This visualization, even though it was just algorithmically based, is actually starting to reflect things about this historical space. What was interesting, what I thought, though, was that, OK, there are two two entities that have been popped in the middle. They're in the middle because they're probably broadly connected across the space. One of them uh, was the 1887 uh, Neglected Ch Children's um, Act. So it's actually a piece of legislation. And I thought, well, that's interesting that that piece of legislation has, is in the middle. And I did a bit of hunting around. I found that there's other pieces of legislation there, and they're all connected to one another. But that's the one that's in the middle. And the other one, entity that's in the middle, is well centralised is actually the Who Am I project itself and that was not unexpected because the whole purpose of that linkage project was to connect up the space and so I go well that's okay so this is actually telling us some interesting things. When I showed this um, visualisation to our state based historians and to Shirley Swain and I said that's the 1887 legislation. She said, well, of course, it was the single most important piece of legislation that affected the way that this community um, was and what happened to it was structured. And so I thought, well, okay, this is a case where, you know, the visualization is readable, it's interpretable, and it's starting to tell us various things. Um, but it's really telling us two things, and this is where we're a little bit, well, what we're, we're still trying to figure out how we actually utilise the, these visualisations. They're quite, I'll show you some of the others from the different states in a minute. They're quite different, um, but what we're seeing are two things. One is there is some reflection of the actual history and structure, and I think we start to see this in Victoria. But what we're also seeing is the way that the historians and the archivists have actually constructed this space. So there are two stories happening simultaneously. And I think this is, again, as Tim said, a lot of this is such a, an interesting experiment. So our experiment is watching these visualisations evolve as the projects evolve to see whether they become more similar or actually they, they become different and whether we're actually capturing differences in um, the histories of, of, uh, of what's happened in child welfare um, in each state and territory. So, a more yeah. So the sort of things that um, we can do at the moment, there's, I'm not going to try and do it because I, I, I don't really have a mouse, but you can basically you can click on that and you can roll over and you'll get, um, you'll find out what all the things are and you can click through to the website, that, that sort of stuff. The sort of things that we're looking to do though, uh, I have some time sliders through it so we can actually see the, this space evolve historically, but also in terms of, there are two, two stories here. One is the story of the project and uh, the other is the story of the content. So we're looking at uh, some other interactive things will enable uh, the user to, because there are lots of different entity types within there, to use different symbols for the different entity types to push um, some of the, the hairball distraction to the background and be able to focus on just certain questions in, in relationships. So there's a whole bunch of things we're looking to do. But the other thing where that uh, I know that's possible so I keep raising these ideas with Steve and he keeps saying, oh yeah, we've done that in another one. One is actually using this as the foundation for search. So rather than when you search, you get just a list of hits. Basically you get where those hits have occurred actually lighting up on the graph. So you actually see, not a list, but the clustering of where, you know, so if you put in orphanages, you'll see, oh, okay, there's a whole cluster around Ballarat. So there's a whole lot of possibilities that we're uh, really keen to explore. And because we've got a bit of money with the Finding Connect project, 
Um, we're hoping to have actually some of this stuff built into the, the website itself um, really by the end of the year or early next year. So, um, but the other, the, yeah, good, nice, nice choice. The, the interesting thing was that when I first started talking about these visualizations to the historians, um, they were going, they had really had no idea why I was bothering with this. Uh, but when we took the visualizations to them uh, in, in June in Adelaide at a, at a meeting we had, and we showed each one their own state, immediately they looked at it and went, oh, I can see what's going on here. And also they said, I can see what I need to do. Because it exposed to them the things that they hadn't done and, they could, and, they, and the things that they possibly should do with the way that they were, they were developing, researching and curating their data. Uh, the other thing, we've been presenting these at um, some of the community workshops recently and what's been interesting is uh, the responses we've had from some people. Uh, some of the government folks have got really excited about this because it, it's, it's, it's a way of looking at something they're doing that they've never had before. Uh, what surprised me was that we had a care leaver speaking in uh, Canberra just the other week and when we got to this part of the, the workshop, he got incredibly excited. I mean, he was he just couldn't believe it. It was just like, oh. and that that was a real surprise to me because that was somebody who'd had he'd been in six different institutions, and by the age of 19 he was in an Adelaide prison. Somehow, by the age of 50, he was not only really tech savvy and well educated, but he was getting really excited by this new technology and sort of the sort of things that it might mean. So that was pretty remarkable. So anyway, that's just some. That'll do. That's <laughs>